Ari, lead singer of KDA and the voted number one most visually appealing champion in League to Men and number two for women. Ari is a nine-tailed fox that seeks to absorb the life essence of humans. After becoming humanoid, Ari adapted herself to the customs of human society and used her profound gift of beauty to attract unsuspecting men. But how good was she in the realm of the pros? Join me and find out in this episode of Deep Dive as we explore the competitive history of Ari the Nine-Tailed Fox. And in this video, we'll be going over the following competitive formats. Ari is a mage assassin hybrid that excels in picking people off with her charm and dancing around the battlefield with her mobility. Released on December 14th, 2011, Ari was dropped in a mid lane meta that didn't particularly suit her. Facing off against the teamfight giants of Karthus and Orianna, the Nine-Tailed Fox saw a decent amount of play with pretty good success. While Orianna was a skill matchup, Karthus was an extremely easy lane for Ari and could be abused if the player piloting her knew what they were doing. The first competitive pick I was able to find for Ari was in the IEM 6 World Championship, where Against All Authority picked her versus Millennium and won. She would be picked a total of 11 times throughout the tournament for a total of 5 wins, 6 losses. As the assassin she was, Ari was able to function decently well in the teamfight meta because she could do things other than pick people off in the 1 vs 1. Her wave clear and AoE were decent and landing a crucial charm could turn teamfights on their heads. She would go on to perform at an average level throughout the rest of the tournaments leading up to the World Championship. And as the aforementioned World Championship approached, Ari would have to take a backseat. The mid lane meta of Season 2 Worlds continued to revolve around teamfighting with Orianna and Karthus. However, with the addition of the heavy zone controlling Anivia, Ari was hard pressed to find a way to be useful in the meta. While she could definitely win lane, that wasn't what the mid lane's job was. In many cases, teams were reliant on their mid laners to stall the game out for the sake of scaling. Slowing down the game really isn't what an assassin would like to do, so Ari saw a huge drop in play. But it wasn't all bad. Ari was picked once in the tournament by Zubu Frost against CLG EU and won. CLG EU would then go on to ban her the next game, but still lost the series. So while Ari wasn't exactly the best pick at Season 2 Worlds, she was still picked in her very first Worlds, which is more than I can say for a lot of champions. And moving on to Season 3, nothing really changed for the Nine-Tailed Fox in Spring. It was still a teamfighting control mage meta with the same picks, and Ari was picked marginally across every region. And just as the Fox was starting to feel left out, Summer Split hit the mid lane meta like a truck. As players grew confident with the new champion Zed, he and Twisted Fate spearheaded the mid lane meta into Assassins and Split Push. The mid lane meta of Summer 2013 revolved around Twisted Fate, Zed, Orianna, Ari, and Jace. Twisted Fate was the most popular, with Zed trailing close behind. Twisted Fate was often picked with Zed for an obnoxious amount of map pressure. Zed, on the other hand, was the go-to assassin pick for just about every pro. Ari, being the soft counter, was picked into him quite a bit. The reason Ari soft counters Zed is that Zed's ulti places him behind the target upon cast, so all the Ari player has to do is charm behind her for the outplay. Unfortunately, that was the best thing the Fox had going for her. Every other matchup was a skill matchup, where other picks could just be better for the situation. But hey, being the counter to one of the top champions in the lane isn't bad by a long shot. In the summer split, Ari was banned 11 times with 25 picks in North America, 19 times with 32 picks in Europe, 7 times with 20 picks in China, and 12 times with 24 picks in Korea. With her decent AoE as well as good burst with Deathfire Grasp, she could make the skill matchups work too, she just wasn't as popular as the other picks. Twisted Fate would go on to eat some nasty, albeit deserved nerfs in patch 3.7, shifting the meta once more. And as the Season 3 World Championship approached, it was clear that it was in favor of Assassins. The mid lane meta for the tournament was Zed, Ari, Orianna, Gragas, and Fizz. Ari was banned 26 times and picked 26 times at the championship. She was picked the most by none other than SKT Faker who would go on to win the tournament. Teamfights weren't as common as before and most games were decided by split pushes or picks. The mid lane meta was full of even matchups. If you were the better mid laner, you would more than likely win the lane. And seeing as Faker was by far the best player in the tournament, he was able to clean house in just about every game he played. Ari did great for herself though. Second most picked mid laner in the tournament was a big jump from her measly one pick in the previous year. Unfortunately, after the tournament, both she and Zed would eat some pretty heavy nerfs afterwards. And sorry to say, the removal of Zed from the meta plus the nerfs would really narrow down the reasons for picking Ari. With less overall damage on every skill she had, as well as less healing, Ari's laning phase was hit hard. 
Targets now took 20% more damage when hit by a charm, but that really doesn't help her in her laning phase. Nothing else to say here, so let's move on to Season 4. The Spring Split of 2014 had its mid lane meta defined by two words. Ban Cassidy. Cassidy had been buffed to disgusting heights and was the only S tier pick to play when everything else seemed B tier in comparison. Other than Cassidy, the mid lane meta consisted of LeBlanc, Orianna, Gragas, Lulu, and Ziggs. Ari saw sparing amounts of play in all regions, but it was getting too hard to make the fox work. With the nerfs that she received at the end of the last season, even skill matchups were now slightly favored for her opponents, and she was picked mostly for comfort. In the summer split, LeBlanc had her silence removed and she fell from the mid lane meta. Nothing else really changed. Ari again saw a tiny number of picks across the world but didn't do anything special. But in patch 4.5, Ari received a small buff to her armor that would help her deal with an item that was becoming the core of the metagame. The Brutalizer was what many would call the perfect purchase for most AD bruisers and assassins. It granted 25 AD, 10% cooldown reduction, and 10 armor penetration for a measly 1337 gold. It was an incredibly good power spike not just for champions like Zed and Jace, but also for the junglers like Kha'Zix, Draven 4, and Rengar that would dominate the coming world championship. The most popular picks in the Season 4 World Championship were Orianna, Zed, Yasuo, Fizz, Jace, and Ari. It was the same story as Season 3, skill matchups across the board with a favorable Zed matchup. That's all it takes for Ari to be picked though, where Zed goes, Ari will follow. That being said, the Ninetailed Fox didn't really do much in the tournament. She was banned once and picked 12 times, but only really took part in one impactful thing in the championship. I am of course talking about when she was picked by Tin Owns of Kaboom Esports against Alliance. For some background information, Kaboom was a Brazilian wildcard team, while Alliance were the European powerhouse that people thought had the potential to move past semis. At this point in time, no wildcard region team had ever made an impact in the World Championship, and they were seen as basically free wins. Just before the Kaboom Alliance game, Alliance had just beaten Najin White Shield, the Korean team in the group. If they won against Kaboom, the worst case scenario was for Cloud9 to also beat Najin and force a three-way tie for first place. But because they lost, Alliance absolutely needed Najin to win in order to make it out of groups. Cloud9 would go on to upset Najin, resulting in a tiebreaker for first place between the two while Alliance was left with their head in their hands. It may have been lack of respect in the draft by Alliance, but Tenons also played that game very cleanly with Ari. So respect where respect is due, this one's for Kaboom. Anyways, other than that, Ari wasn't really picked in any other important games in the tournament. The last time we see her is in the quarterfinals against Zed in Najin White Shield vs OMG. Although to be fair, Zed wasn't seen any further than this either. Ari had definitely seen better years, but being part of the historical Kaboom upset is a pretty good consolation prize. And moving on to Season 5, lots of changes were on the horizon for the Ninetailed Fox. Deathfire Grasp was removed from the game in patch 5.2, and Ari, being the champion that by far used it the most, got quite a few buffs to compensate. Her Q now granted movement speed while the orb was moving, and her W and E did more damage. Unfortunately, they removed the 20% damage increase when landing her charm, and she was seen as very much worse than she was with Deathfire Grasp. Luden's Echo became a core item on her, replacing Deathfire and helping with some burst and wave clear. That being said, the spring split of 2015 saw Lissandra, Zed, LeBlanc, and Ari as the top picks. It was three assassins and Lissandra, and Lissandra plays into assassins really well. Ari was doing what she had always been doing, having a good lane into Zed and having skill matchups elsewhere. Ryu of H2K in the EU LCS was by far the best Ari of 2015. He boasted a clean 13-2 record with Ari, claiming third place in the spring split with his team. As usual, Ari wasn't top dog, or fox. But she wasn't bottom tier or anything either. She could always leverage her good matchups and find ways to be useful with her mobility and pick potential. But sadly, Summer Split was fast approaching and with it a sandstorm that would knock all other mid laners out of contention. Enter Azir. Azir was a champion that could do everything that a control mage should be able to do, dialed up to 11. With him in the meta, there was no chance that assassins would have any hope in winning that lane. Instead, other control mages stepped up to the plate to try to contend with him. Victor and Orianna were his competition, and anyone else would be fighting an uphill battle. Lulu was sometimes picked mid, but it was mostly top lane. Ari had very little to do in this mid meta, where her best matchup was an even one against Orianna. She was picked a tiny bit across every region once again, but to no real effect. 
And moving on to the Season 5 World Championship, not much really changed in terms of mid lane. The Juggernaut patch affected top lane and jungle heavily, but mid stayed about the same. Lulu was a lot more popular mid, but it was the same picks dominating as Summer Split. Azir, Victor, and Orianna. Ari was picked three times in the tournament, but did basically nothing, picked mostly for comfort. As crazy of a Worlds as Season 5 was, there really isn't much more to say here. It was the same mid meta as Summer Split, and Ari continued to struggle. And moving on to Season 6, the Marksman revamp as well as the League of Thunderlords shook the metagame quite a bit. But yeah, you guys know where this is going. Azir, Victor, and Orianna all took advantage of Thunderlords well, so there wasn't really much for Ari to do other than get outclassed again. Spring Split had basically nothing for her, and in the midseason, the Mage rework plus Azir nerfs finally shook up the meta. While Victor and Orianna were strong, the reworked Ryze, Cassiopeia, Vladimir, and Malzahar were all great picks as well. Ari was completely left in the dust by the competition. The mobility that made her so strong before was now a non-factor as most of her opponents could either stop her from moving or didn't care if she did. Ari saw a small amount of play and experimentation with Frost Queen's claim, which at the time had the active of Twin Shadows. It was an extremely gold efficient item and helped with pick potential quite a bit. Unfortunately for Ari, it wasn't even close to being enough. And that didn't change come Season 6 Worlds. The mid lane meta for Season 6 Worlds revolved around Victor, Cassiopeia, Ryze, Syndra, Vladimir, and Orianna. It was a tough world for assassins. Top laners played tanks, junglers were tanky enough with just strength of the ages, mid laners had heavy zone control and survivability, ADCs only had to press R before they died to do their job, and supports were more tanks. Ari was completely outclassed in a meta full of tanks that didn't care about her damage and lack of utility, especially when compared to champions like Victor. She had no picks in Season 6 Worlds. For the first time since her creation in Season 2, Ari didn't receive a single pick in the World Championship. With her lane dominated by flat out stronger champions, all there was left to do for the Nine-Tailed Fox was pray for nerfs. And moving on to Season 7, the Assassin reworks that turned LeBlanc and Rengar into complete monsters didn't even mention Ari. Poor Ari had to sit at the kids table and was forced to watch the two murder all of Summoner's Rift at the adult table. But just because she didn't receive any changes doesn't mean she didn't get better. With heavy handed nerfs coming in for Victor, it was really only Orianna that was left holding down the control mage fort. Corky emerged as a mid laner and Jace came back. This gave Ari a couple more even matchups to work with as opposed to the long list of unfavorable ones she had before. In the spring split, Ari was banned 21 times with 27 picks in North America, 6 times with 12 picks in Europe, 12 times with 16 picks in China, and 18 times with 28 picks in Korea. With ADCs in a strong position again, it was all the more important for someone to kill them, and Ari was more than up for the task. The Nine-Tailed Fox enjoyed dancing around the battlefield, making plays and getting picks on unsuspecting ADCs and supports. But as fun as it was, all things come to an end. In the summer split, the mid meta shifted yet again to re-include Kassadin and Malzahar, while new picks like Talia and Galio also entered to spread their new wings. Ari had terrible matchups into Kassadin, Malzahar, and Talia, and while she didn't exactly lose lane to Galio, it's not like she could do anything to him either. Ari received virtually zero picks across all regions in the summer split. As quickly as her assassinating abilities were made useful, they faded. And oh boy, it was about to get even worse. Because looming over the horizon was the item that would define the metagame by itself. Ardent Sensor absolutely took over summer playoffs across all regions, as well as the Season 7 World Championship. The mid lane meta was about the same, with the prevailing strategy being to roam bot as much as possible, whether it be with Talia or Galio, and get your bot lane ahead. With top laners and junglers both building Stoneplate Locket, Ari found it absolutely impossible to assassinate anyone. She had her pick potential and utility with her charm, but it wasn't even coming close to what champions like Galio and Malzahar could do. There really isn't much to say here, she wasn't anywhere near as good as the competition and the meta was awful for her. Ari once again didn't receive a single pick in the tournament. And moving on to season 8, Ari prayed that the coming preseason changes would help her out of the pit that was being a B tier champion. And she kind of got her wish. Kind of. The rune rework brought a whole lot of new ways to play champions. Electrocute was flat out worse than Thunderlords in most cases and there really wasn't much experimentation with Ari to try the other keystones. While defaulting to the keystone with the similar playstyle you were used to isn't necessarily bad, it did hinder the discovery of Glacial Augment. Glacial Augment slows a target when you auto attack, but more importantly creates a slow zone in a line when you slow them with an active item. 
This coupled with the fact that Twin Shadows and Hextech GLP were already alright items on Ari meant that she could have an absolutely disgusting amount of utility. But perhaps just as important as the Keystone itself was the secondary rune Time Warp Tonic, which increased the duration of potions by 20% and granted you 5% movement speed for the duration. Taking this rune meant that you could start Corrupting Pot, and maybe even a Dark Seal to increase the healing of the potions more to sustain just about every lane. It was quite a different playstyle from the Pickmaster Assassin that Ari was used to. It was more similar to a Control Mage hybrid. However, it's important to remember that nobody was playing this style quite yet, but the time would come. The Spring Split of 2018 saw the mid lane meta as Rise, Azir, Zoe, Galio, Orianna, and Talia. The Electrocute playstyle of Ari just straight up lost pretty much all of those lanes, and she wasn't a good pick in any scenario. She was picked next to zero times across every region. In patch 8.8, .8, Ari received a buff to her charm, causing the target to take 20% more damage from her other spells for 5 seconds. This is when the build was discovered. As the Glacial Augment style of play started to rise in popularity, Summer Split continued. With Azir gutted again, Summer saw Zoe, Orianna, Syndra, Rise, and Galio as the top picks. Same bad matchups for Ari really, and just as the Glacial Augment build was really starting to surge in solo queue, Aatrox, Akali, and Irelia were pushed to the top of the to learn list for every mid or top laner. The three were so insanely strong that any other pick that wasn't Galio, Lissandra, or Urgot just looked like a gimmick in comparison. This of course included Glacial Augment Ari, regardless of how good it could have been in pro play a few months prior. And unfortunately yet again for the Fox, this meta continued onto Worlds. KDA burst on stage and became an instant global phenomenon, but compared to her bandmates Akali and Kaisa, Ari never made it past the first verse. The Season 8 World Championship had two metas, separated by semifinals. Before semifinals, the believed strongest meta was Lissandra or Galio mid, hypercarry ADC, tank supports, tank tops, and heavy ganking junglers. Ari was picked twice before semifinals, once in the play-in stage by GBM playing with Electrocute and Lost and once by Cloud9's Jensen in the quarterfinals against Afrika Freaks and won. After that though, there was no stopping the solo lane meta. Whoever had the better solo laners would win with no exceptions. Any player that gets ahead on Irelia, Aatrox, Akali, or LeBlanc would hard carry and there really wasn't anything that could be done to stop them. After a pretty long hiatus from the world stage, Ari was finally back, but the welcome party wasn't quite what she wanted. If not for the obscenely strong champions she had to contend with, the Ninetailed Fox definitely could have done more at Season 8 Worlds. And of course, because just about every top and mid laner was abusing Time Warp Tonic, it was reworked to heal the first 50% of the potion instantly and give the movement speed bonus for the duration that was left. This meant that sustain wasn't quite as good and most mid laners stopped taking it altogether in favor of Cosmic Insight. The preseason of Season 9 brought about a ton of changes. Overall increased bounties, turret platings, decreased jungle exp, decreased neutral objective respawn timers, and more. But one thing remains the same, Aftershock Lissandra mid. After the nerf bat finally hit Akali and Irelia, Lissandra was the one standing atop the rest with her disgusting engage and survivability. Not only that, but a new terror joined the roster of mid lane, and her name was Zoe. With her long range bubbles putting people to sleep and disgusting across the map one shots, there was absolutely nothing Ari could do to stand out. Ari was picked a total of 4 times across all regions in the spring split of 2019, and the only player that managed to win was EDG Scout. With the plethora of mid lane threats still around from the world championship, Ari could do absolutely nothing but sit there and wait for any change to happen that would make her relevant once more. But there was a silver lining. Well, as close to a silver lining as she was gonna get. The Glacial Augment build that Ari had popularized had spread to lots of mages that loved additional utility, such as Vel'Koz, Vagar, and Morgana. It would also be the main build for Nico once her on-hit attack speed build was nerfed. There really isn't much to say here, she was suffering from the same problems that she had for years. And in the summer split, with the oppressive additions of Silas and Kiana, as well as the old titans of Corky, Azir, and Ryze moving back up to the forefront of the meta, there was, once again, really nothing Ari could do to stand above the rest. But good news, she performed extremely well despite that with an astonishing 100% win rate. With one game.
Alright, fine. Sarcasm aside, the one game she was played in wasn't bad at all by any stretch of the imagination. Power of Evil played her in Game 5 of the third place match in the Summer Playoffs, going 1-0 and 12. But strangely enough, he didn't use the Glacial Augment build, and instead opted into the straight AP Burst Assassin build. There could be a couple of reasons for this. Maybe he didn't have practice on it, maybe he did have practice on it but felt it wasn't as good, maybe he was just accustomed to the playstyle of Akali and Kiana and didn't want to change too much. Maybe it was just a comfort pick. Either way, it was easily the most successful Ari had been in the past year. And moving on to the Season 9 World Championship, you might not be surprised to hear that the Nine-Tailed Fox wasn't picked a single time. The meta of Season 9 Worlds revolved heavily around flex picks, particularly between top and mid. Ryze, Akali, Kale, Renekton, Camille, Aurelia, Scion, Kled, Vladimir, Aatrox, and Pantheon were all incredibly potent picks that could go into either lane. Drafting was basically, pick whatever powerful stuff you can and we can figure out the lanes later in the draft. Other than the flex picks, there was also Kiana, LeBlanc, Syndra, Oriana, Tristana, Corky, Twisted Fate, Galio, and Nautilus if your name was Doinbee. And while Power of Evil managed to make Ari work once in summer, he was the only player to pick her, and he didn't make it to Worlds, so any hope of him picking her was gone. The tournament continued in a 3-1 fashion as the superior teams of G2 Esports and Fun Plus Phoenix surged ahead towards the finals. It was a clash of playstyle differences and everyone was wondering which one really was superior. G2 with their so-called 4 fun picks, unpredictable rotations, and aggressive map trades, all wrapped up in an almost mechanically perfect gift wrap. Or Fun Plus Phoenix, sporting the standard jaw-dropping Chinese aggression we had all grown to love along with a mind-blowing champion pool. It was built up to be such a hype final, regions clashed with pride as it once again began to feel like an East vs West mentality. It was the second year in a row that had a Chinese vs European final, and unfortunately for Europe, it was the second year in a row that Europe was 3-0'd. Doinbee's mid lane Nautilus dredged lines G2 apart, dismantling them in the second shortest best of 5 in finals history. But who knows, maybe Doinbee could have pulled out a disgusting Ari had she been just a little bit stronger. Season 10 is about a quarter of the way finished and brought dragon changes that have literally changed Summoner's Rift. It's a bit early to say for sure, but so far there's been a good amount of mid lane diversity. Zoe and Syndra have been picked a bunch, but other than them, 30 other champions have already been picked mid in the major regions. Ari hasn't been seen in the big leagues yet as of this recording, but she's been picked quite a few times in the European minor leagues, so there's a pretty good chance we'll see her at least once. Are you kidding me? And that's it. So how good was Ari in competitive play? She was... above average. She was never exceptional by any means, but could bank on either winning lanes or skill matchups and win by picking people off later. Season 2 she wasn't great. The heavy teamfight meta did not match well with her kit. She managed to pull through in the tournaments leading up to Worlds, but when it came, she was only picked once. Season 3 was definitely better. Not so much in Spring, but Summer brought her favorite matchup Zed into the picture. She could be reliably picked into him, or blind picked for skill matchups with any other mid at the time without any problems. Season 4, both Ari and Zed were nerfed and didn't see anywhere near as much play as they had previously. She was picked just a small amount across all regions, but took part in the biggest upset at the time, Kaboom vs Alliance. Season 5 Zed was back, which meant that Ari was back, but unfortunately for her, Deathfire Grasp was removed and the subsequent buffs just weren't enough to keep her above the rest. The meta later shifted to favor control mages, but let's not forget Ryu's 13 and 2 record across the year. Ari was picked 3 times at Worlds but didn't really do much, it looked like a comfort pick. Season 6 control mages were still king, or emperor in Azir's case, and no assassin saw any play. Even after Azir was nerfed, the plethora of new mages from the reworks took over the mid lane. With losing matchups mid and no really important squishies for her, she just didn't have a place. Ari had no picks in Season 6 Worlds. Season 7 was better, but not by too much. With Control Mages nerfed, Ari found skill matchups mid again. That and with ADCs no longer picked for utility, they were valuable squishies to kill. Worlds was ardent meta, and we all know how assassins do surrounded by tanks and shield supports. Not really much to say. Season 8 had the potential to be great, but fell short. The rune rework brought Glacial Augment, but by the time people had discovered it, it was too late and there were just other, more brutally disgusting champions to play. She did finally get picked at Worlds again, so I guess that counts for something. Season 9 was bad. Same story as before, where there were just other champions that could do her job better, and she had a total of 5 games played in the year. But hey, she did better than most for a number of other seasons, so maybe it was her time to sit back and relax for a bit. Thanks for watching everyone, and if you'd like to see more, subscribe to watch the next one when it comes out, and leave a comment to help decide which champion I do next. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. 
And guys, if you like videos like this, be sure to check out Fall Swipe Gaming, who makes videos in this format for Pokemon and Smash. They inspired me to make this video. Special thank you to them.